Hello and welcome to Your Coaching Journey, a podcast for doctors about coaching. Whether you are a coaching doctor, a doctor who is learning to coach, or a doctor who'd like to build coaching into your professional life, then this is the podcast for you. Hello, my name's Tom Dillon, and with me today is my co-host and business partner, Helen Leathers. Hello. Hello, Helen. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you very of much. Course. I was just, I just thought I'd stumbled over your name then, but realised I hadn't actually, so that's good. Good, yes. I'm getting because... much better at that. <laughs> it wouldn't Helen be the first. letters. <laughs> Stop it. No, I just, I don't know why I struggle, but I do. Anyway, today we are, what are we doing today? Today we're going to talk about metaphors. Oh yes, metaphors. And we may touch a little bit on clean language yeah i think we were going to do the tool of uh metaphor but then clean language is an approach to coaching that i thought it'd be useful to include we might do a separate episode on clean language because it there's obviously a little bit more mileage in that to talk mm. about as an approach but we'll we'll touch on it today and give people a flavor of it okay so let's start with what is a metaphor oh goodness i thought you might ask me that um <laughs> what is a metaphor so a metaphor is obviously a way of describing something by referring to it as something else so like all the world's a stage is a metaphor excellent and all the men and women merely players. <laughs> Shall I go on? No, you're no, okay. No, okay, yeah. good. No, I don't know anymore. So that's <laughs> <laughs> I was watching um, an episode of Upstart Crow, the comedy about Shakespeare, and you know the, the way that he coined lots of phrases, but claims everything. And obviously, there's a lot of metaphor in Shakespeare's mm, there are. language. Yeah. yeah. So yes, yeah, so that's the, it's that way of um, explaining your situation by referring to something else. Okay, and we do it a lot, don't we? In, yeah, we do in it far more language. than we imagine. Um, and people say, well, I don't really use metaphor. And then when you get them talking, you realise there's a lot in there. And I, when we do our coaching diploma, we talk about metaphor. Um, and I quite often do a demonstration of a, a coaching session, just 10 minutes of coaching, where I ask the participants to look for metaphor in the language that the coachee is using. Um, and invariably it happens. Mm. There was one lady who, so the lady in question came from Nigeria, um, spoke perfectly well in terms of English. She, her English was very, very good. Um, but I think there's something about learning a foreign language that means you are more precise in the way that you speak so that you're not misunderstood. So yeah. maybe there's something about that that cuts out the metaphor. So she just spoke in a very literal way. Mm. And obviously, in other languages, there will be metaphors that don't then get translated into English. Yes. And we have said before where we've had people on the course who speak English as a second language. Mm. We've actually said, haven't we, like, if we use a metaphor or a phrase that you don't get because it's not <laughs> part of your understanding of the English language, yeah. please tell us. Yeah. Because sometimes and, people look at us blankly. Yeah. And I've mentioned before that we had someone on the course who used the metaphor of not entering the garden in terms of not having a conversation yes um that might provoke a response <laughs> just don't go there um so it was that sort of phrase but it was spanish so the lady was from spain um she said we have an expression which is don't enter the garden um which we just don't have we don't the, have no uh, absolutely there's another one in spanish which is more is lost in cuba which means you know more is worst things happen at sea Okay. Ah, I'm yes. always lost in Cuba. Yeah. I, I imagine I've I've not looked at the uh, origins of it, but I imagine that it was with the communist revolution in the fifties that suddenly everything was lost for those that had wealth. They mm. all had to escape to Miami and lost everything. Mm. So that might be where it comes from. But yeah. So, so there will be those. Okay. So metaphor is a figure of speech that helps us communicate. Yes, I think if we get to the point of it being a figure of speech, a cliche then there might not be an awful lot of power in it because there are turns of phrase that people just wheel out without thinking about it that don't mean anything to them. Mm. Um, and obviously, when we talk about metaphor in coaching, what we're really looking for is a way of understanding the coachee's world. Mm. And if they use a metaphor, there's a good chance they're choosing it for a reason. They might It might be unconscious. They might not be aware of why they're choosing it but there's a good chance there is a reason for them choosing it and, mm. and that it means something to them. So I had a lovely occasion uh, during COVID where someone was talking about their situation. And she said, oh, it's just, it's like, a, 
I'm just lost in in the forest. It's like my camper van's broken down in the forest. I'm trying to fix it. I've got all these tools. I'm trying to fix it to get out of the forest. So that was the metaphor that she used, which is lovely, isn't it? Yes. That's, that's a really rich metaphor that you can then work with. Um, and so what I'm, why I wanted to cover this today in this episode is that if we overlook those metaphors, we miss the opportunity to really draw out of them what's going on in their world. Mm. Whereas if we pick up on them and start to expand on them, then we can start to build a picture. And I think that's the really powerful thing about metaphor is that it creates a visual image that will stay with us. So the lady with her camper van, van in the forest, I still remember that mm. years later, that was four years ago. Um, but it, I still have a very clear recollection of that conversation because there was such a lovely picture that was produced. Mm. I had another lady that um, towards the end of COVID was talking about her job being over in terms of managing the organization's response to COVID. And she said, it's, I just feel like I'm on a train and we're pulling into the station. And as we pull in, I need to let go of the carriages I actually, she was letting go of the carriages before she got to the station. So I just need to drop the carriages off where they need to be at different departments. And I just want to pull into the station just on the engine and just step off the engine and go my own way. And, which wow. was, again, a lovely metaphor to mm. think about. And I, I asked her the question, so as you step off the engine onto the platform, what happens next? Mm. And she said, well, OK, so then I need a bridge. I need a bridge to the next place I'm going to. So, again, that's... Not four years ago, like two years ago, mm. um, we were having that conversation. And I still remember it very clearly. And I would imagine she does as well, because it's yeah. conjured such a strong image. So it sounds like we can use metaphor to explain our situation, to help explore how we're feeling about something that perhaps is hard to describe in other ways. But then also we can use metaphor to look forward and, and bridge the gap between where we are and where we want to be. In the case of your client, it was literally a bridge. Um, yeah. So, and, and bridging the gap is a metaphor in itself, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And we're, there's a lovely metaphor of coaching and that emergent approach to coaching of building the bridges you're walking on it. Because mm. in coaching, we, we, we don't know where it's going to go. We don't no. know what's going to come out of our coaches' mouths. So we are trying to move forward, but we don't really know what the future looks like. So we just build in that bridge as we walk on it. And as coaches, we use metaphors all the time. We talk about having a bag of tools or a box of tools yeah, yeah. at our disposal yeah. that we can use with our yeah. clients. So there's a lovely metaphor. Yeah. yeah, we don't literally have a bag of tools, no, do we? that would be so. weird. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the thing. When we are coaching, I don't think it's particularly useful for us as coaches to use metaphor with our coaches, for us to introduce metaphors and say, oh, this sounds like you're on a yacht and you need to change tack and the wind's blowing in different... I think if we start to introduce our own metaphors, that's not the coach's world. That's the way we interpret yeah. it. So yeah. we need to make sure we don't put our own words yeah. into their story. We're entering their world and hoping mm. that we can help them clarify what's going on for them by exploring their world and building that mental image for them of what's going on for them yeah and i think yeah. metaphor is a great way to do that so by listening out for these metaphors yeah when our clients are talking and finding out more about them exploring them mm. more deeply yeah that can be really useful yeah and, and we can we can draw them out mm -hmm. and one of the we're going to talk about clean language which is a particular approach to coaching which just uses the coach's language and if their coach's language is metaphor, then you use the metaphor. But they have a way of drawing out the metaphor. So if someone says, from this, you ask them, you know, what would you like to take away from this session today? Mm -hmm. They say, well, I just want some clarity. Then you might ask, and what kind of clarity is that clarity? Mm. Now, that sounds like a really clunky question, doesn't it? it? Does. As you say, I, the first few times I said that out loud, I thought, oh, that sounds really odd. It's, it doesn't feel right. Um, but I've got very used to that now. So mm. that is a question that I will ask people when they say, well, I just want some clarity. OK, and what kind of clarity is that clarity? Yeah, I use that too. And I think that it is re it feels weird at first. And we've had people on the course with other questions mm. say oh it sounds like a coaching question I don't know if I want to ask something that sounds so coachy yeah. but actually as the recipient 
of that question. Is that the right word? As, mm. as the coachee, hearing that question, we're in that moment, we're in that zone. We don't think, oh, that was a coachy question. No. We just go with it. Yeah. So I think we have to sometimes get over ourselves and ask the question and mm. eventually it becomes part of our um, bag of tools. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if in response to that clarity question, if someone said, you said, well, what kind of clarity is that clarity? Well, it's like a, it's like a box. It's like a, a wooden box. <laughs> mm. And then you can start to, oh, how big's the wooden box? And what mm-hmm. colour is it? And mm. you can start to explore it in more detail. Yeah. Um, I had a, a lovely experience of someone saying, oh, I've just got this weight on my shoulder. And I said, okay, what kind of weight is that weight? And I said, oh, hmm. well, it's like a grey block. It's like a grey concrete block. <laughs> I said, oh, it sounds really heavy. And she said, yeah, no, it is really heavy. I said, okay, so that's on your shoulder. You've got this grey concrete block on your shoulder. Where would you like the concrete block to be? And she said, well, I, I need to put it in front of me so I can see it. Because it is there as a weight, but actually I think it could be quite useful. And what I want to do is to be able to use some of it. And how do I... So I think if I have it in front of me, I can then break it down into smaller blocks. And I can take out the bits that I need. And the bits that get left behind, they'll still be there for another time. But I don't need to use all of it now. So we suddenly had this... (laughs) I could see the grey block in front of her. I could see her breaking it down into smaller chunks. And yeah... What a lovely, lovely coaching conversation. Yeah. And I think that's where metaphor can be really useful, just to broaden out someone's thinking and get them to think in different ways. Mm. And so the metaphors, if they come from them and they're, they're flowing, um, they're there for a reason. They are choosing that language to express themselves for a reason. And I think, if say, if we ignore it, then um, we're missing a trick, really. Mm. Oh, missing a trick. There's a metaphor. There's a metaphor. <laughs> so, yeah. I remember having a conversation with you about um, a while back about my coaching, my own coaching journey and development. And um, I just use this as an example of, you know, metaphors can come from all sorts of inspiration. And I remember saying, it's like I've got some of the stones. Mm. And I was referring to the gauntlet the glove from Avengers Endgame yes. and I say so, I was like so I've got the first three stones and I just need the other two yeah. and it's like what are the other two stones what do they represent and how can I yeah. so metaphors can be bizarre as well yeah absolutely <laughs> but that's that but what a rich metaphor that is isn't it mm. that you, you kind of know that you've got some of it and you can see that you can see the glove the gauntlet can't you yeah and it obviously was for development and not um decimating populations yeah. but you know um thankfully <laughs> But it was, yeah. it, 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 for me, that helped really clarify things and stop that um, nebulous thinking mm. and kind of got me to really focus in on what was important for my next step mm. and my evolution. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it just came to mind. I, I recalled that as we were talking yeah. about metaphor there. I and I think an expansion of that metaphor when we had that conversation, I remember that conversation was that you had this shed. <laughs> which oh was... gosh, there was a shed, wasn't there? Yeah, what was you the had shed? A shed? So all of your different coaching learning was in the shed on different shelves, but there was a space on the shelf that needed filling as well. So that was an expansion of that. But, yes, and yeah. I think the shed was like my coaching space. Yeah. 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 I remember that now. <laughs> so I, obviously our, our recollection is, is slightly vague, but there's still that recollection of that um, metaphorical landscape that we were mm. talking about that we can bring to mind. And if we were trying to recollect a coaching conversation that we'd had that didn't have an image attached to it, I think we'd really struggle. Yeah, yeah, because that's going back four years yeah. to that conversation and recalling what it was about. And Yeah. Yeah. So... In terms of my approach to metaphor, as I say, I don't tend to introduce my own metaphor. And I think some coaches will. And I've heard coaches or people that have received coaching say, oh, my coach came up with a really great metaphor for this. And it might be helpful, but I think, yeah, it's tricky because it might not. (laughs) It might really jar with someone that go, well, that's not, that's no use at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's not part of their landscape. You know, if you're a coach with an interest in sailing and you introduce a sailing metaphor and someone just, just doesn't really get it, mm. you, know, you can't really work with that. You can't expand on it. So 
allowing the client's met- own metaphors to surface. Yeah. Would you ever sort of ask, is there a metaphor? I tend not to. No, I don't. I tend to ask questions that generate that response. So, what kind of clarity is that clarity? You're inviting a metaphor, aren't you? Yeah. You're inviting them to describe it as something else. Um, That we've mentioned clean language, and within clean language, there are are very few questions to be asked. So, they have a, a list of questions that you could be asking. So, it's very simple in that respect. You could just learn depending on which school of clean language you go to, there's between nine and 12, I think, some mm. questions. Um, but you've only got 12 questions to choose from. But one of the questions is, and that's clarity like what? Now, I think that's a difficult question to answer for some people. Yeah. I don't think they'd necessarily go to a metaphor. So there are you know, ways to draw out the metaphor but we I think we have to be careful so I, I wouldn't be as blatant saying so what's the metaphor for this mm. and uh, my supervisor tends to ask me that question and I just yeah there isn't one <laughs> and yet you talk in metaphor I do. a lot I do talk in metaphor a lot but th- I think there's something about that question that provokes uh, almost a shutting down for me mm. almost like I'm being it's almost like, I'm, I tell you what is it it's probably <laughs> to use a metaphor it's probably like the teacher picking on you to, you know, what, what's the metaphor for this, Tom? Yeah. Um, and not having an answer ready. You mm-hmm. feel under pressure to come up with an answer. I have a question like that. that if I'm asked it, what's I What's your will... question that you react to? I know you don't know, but if you did know. Yeah. Yeah. But that's because the people that have asked it to me in the past and the context in which it's been asked. Yes. It rubs me up the wrong yeah, way. It, it is one of those questions that can produce a really good response, but it can. could produce that defensive reaction as yeah. well well I've just told you I don't know why yeah. are you asking me again yeah uh, so yeah so th- that's perhaps not a great way to ask for a metaphor is just to ask outright um, asking you know what kind of clarity is that clarity I think is, is a good way um, but people as they talk and you explore with them their landscape they will start to come up with I just something came to mind just as we were talking uh Quite, I quite often, I've heard it from a few different coaches, um, talk about coaching as a lighthouse. Yes. Because of, the, <laughs> because of the rays of light that come out from a lighthouse, it's almost like a beacon, isn't it? Mm. But actually a lighthouse is warning people to stay away. <laughs> And I always think, what Rock, a strange, danger. yeah, what a strange metaphor to choose for coaching. Oh, let's lure you onto the rocks. <laughs> no, no, we want you to stay away. Um, so, we need, that's not a good metaphor. It's not, is it? But I, I do see it a lot in uh, you know, LinkedIn and things like that. People post, oh, you know. But isn't that interesting? Because that metaphor means something that makes sense to the person using yes. it, and other people will go well hold on a minute that's yeah, weird yeah. so that's why it's important that we don't yeah so if you introduce inflict, that to your coachee yeah. is it a metaphor is it always like a lighthouse no uh, what no <laughs> <laughs> i don't want people to draw, be drawn onto the rocks mm. oh, i don't know lighthouse is warning people away from it but i don't want people to stay away no yeah. exactly yeah. exactly so yeah there's a cautionary tale yeah there. So I think a good metaphor that I have heard for coaching is it's like having a torch. Mm-hmm. So there's a darkness all around for the coachee and the coachee has a torch that they can shine in whatever direction the coachee wants them to shine it. Yeah. But it helps them to explore that little area of their world. And that's nice then because you're walking that path together. Yeah. Yeah. And there's another metaphor, walking the path together. Yes. And obviously the, the name of our business, your coaching journey. Mm. There's a metaphor. And we talk a lot about the path we're walking and the journey we're taking. Yes. And and another instance comes to mind of someone I was coaching who had a real block with where she wanted to get to. She wanted to be a professor and just just got all these hurdles in my way. I've left it too late. There's too many hurdles. And rather than going with the hurdles and asking what kind of hurdles they are, um, I just said, what if they weren't hurdles? What if they were stepping stones? What's the next step? And she just went, oh, well, I, I need to do this. And was off. And mm. suddenly the hurdles disappeared and they were suddenly stepping stones. And I think we have to be careful that we're not yeah. dismissive of their metaphor. And we don't. But that, that's, you know, I was going with my intuition and thinking, OK, well, actually, it doesn't seem particularly helpful to have those um, hurdles there. 
what if we change the landscape a little bit? Mm. But that's another question we could have asked then. That's another, yeah, yeah. rather than saying, what if they were stepping stones? Mm. We could ask, what if you changed the landscape? What yes. could change that could help you yeah. move forward? Or a cleaner way to do it would be, so if we were using a clean language approach, would be to explore the hurdles. Mm. And what kind of hurdles are they? And when you get to the hurdle, what happens next? Mm. Those sorts of questions. What happens just before the hurdle appears? Mm. So, yeah, there's lots of different ways that we could do it. So we're listening for metaphor, mm. effectively playing back the metaphor yeah. to allow further exploration from the coachee mm. to, to really explore what's going on for them and then potentially to move them forward, yeah. especially when there are hurdles in the way yeah. and there are blockages or landslips or <laughs> our path is blocked in some other way. Yeah. Can I get any more metaphors into this? Well, and, and like you say, we're going to be working with the coach's own metaphor i think if mm. we start to paraphrase and bring in different so if we change hurdles to landslips or boulders or whatever then it loses something so if we can stick with the coach's language and carry on using that yeah um i saw a lovely demonstration of someone using clean language and uh, cl clean language we'll, we'll touch on it briefly um so clean language is a therapeutic approach that comes from david grove who was a therapist in australia and he recognized that people talk about their internal states quite often we'll talk in metaphor um, so started to explore that with them and then that way of being was decoded by um, some English therapists um, who came up with this set of 12 questions that tend to get asked and I actually watched so James Lawley is one of those people that sort of brought it to coaching really mm. And I watched him do de a demonstration and it was lovely because he just asked someone about their world and asked what she needed. And she said, oh, I just need some space. And he said, what kind of space is it? And she, she said, oh, it's, it's a box. It's a red box. I said, what else is there about the box? And it's a red velvet box. And how big is it? And he, she described the size of it. And then he said, oh, where do you need that box to be? And she said, and she pointed to her abdomen between her heart and her gut. She just mm. there's this space in there that she wanted it to be, and so. And he said, and when that box, that red velvet box, is there, what happens to the problem? Because she described a problem. And she said, oh, well, that just goes away as long as I've got the red velvet box and it's there, then I'll be fine. He, we never knew what the problem was. Wow. So absolutely content free in terms yeah, yeah. of the problem. So we, uh, so, and, I, and I guess that's one of the problems that if you just work in metaphor, if you work in a clean way, you could leave having no understanding of what they've just been talking about. Mm. <laughs> they just got this metaphorical landscape that you've explored um, and probably difficult to come back to it later on another session. Yeah. Oh, last time we were talking about the red velvet box. How's that? <laughs> and I think it's difficult for a coach to hold that space and be context free or content free. Mm. Yeah, but, but again, that comes back to that idea of not inflicting your metaphor on your client, because we're, if a client was to say, I need some space, we wouldn't, mm. I wouldn't personally think of a box because no. that would feel like being closed in. Mm. So what so, comes to mind for you when someone says, I need some space? Honestly, I get the white space from the matrix. Okay. So clean, white, mm. you know, things appear. What, that what came need. to mind for me in just that space was a playground. Oh, like wow. a, went back to childhood of having uh, a, an empty playground. How lovely. So there, so that's the power of it, isn't it? They mm. go, what kind of space is that space? Well, for you, it's the white matrix space. It means nothing to me. No. <laughs> I did make you watch the you film. You did make me watch yeah. the movie. <laughs> did you fall asleep at that point? I did, yeah. yeah. I okay. don't remember the white space at all. <laughs> I can't believe that. So if so if you as a coach said, oh, it's like the white space in the Matrix. You wouldn't get I, it. I, I, no, no. No. So I would work with you and okay, well, what, what more is that? What else is there about that white space? And so we'd start to explore it. And so for me, you would say, and you know, what, what else is there about that playground? And start to explore that landscape. Mm. Um, there's a couple of odd things about clean language and I say it's quite it sounds very simple and I think coaches are drawn to it a little bit because of its simplicity 
So it's it's simple but very difficult. Yes. <laughs> Complex. Um, so a couple of the questions are strange. So that and that's clarity like what is or that's clarity. Yeah, that's clarity. And like that's what. clarity like. Yes, that's the question. It's not like what. And that's clarity like. I think that's a tricky question for coaches to answer, and it might not end up in a metaphor. Mm. I think another question that they ask, and I really don't understand why they ask it, is, and is there anything else about that? Yes. Red velvet box. Um, because it's closed. It's a closed question, and it closed down their thinking. And I actually, when James Lawley was um, doing this demonstration, I asked him, I said, I, I noticed you use that closed question, and it's obviously a closed question that forms the set of questions for clean language. Um, why do you ask a closed question? Because you know, within coaching circles, we tend not to. And he said, because I don't want to put the coachee under pressure to come up with an answer if there isn't one. Well, what we know in the coaching world is that when we ask questions in an open way, so if we said, and what else is there about that box? Then they carry on thinking. Yes. And we'll probably come up with something new. If we say, and is there anything else about that box? They might just go, nah. Yeah. <laughs> Without doing the extra thinking. Yes. And in fact, that very question is the question that absolutely convinced me that you weren't just being a pedant about open questions. Because I was in a scenario where someone who had lots of wonderful thoughts in a breakout room online was asked, is there anything else? And mm. he said, no. Yeah. And I knew there was so much more he had to contribute. Yeah. And that you know, actually made me say, yes, Tom, you were right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's, it, yeah, I don't understand why they use that mm. either. I, know, I say I've not found a satisfactory answer to that question. Uh, but that, that's not to uh, undermine the power of using the client's language mm. and whether you formally train in clean language i i think it i think it's one of those things that is very difficult to do well and i've watched demonstrations of it by mm. people that have trained in it but still really struggle to get it right and i think you can tie yourself in knots by trying to do try trying to be pure about that approach but it could contribute to your overall approach potentially yeah if it's something I, you wanted I to explore. definitely i will introduce that what kind of space is that space um that's a question that i ask um my favorite coaching question comes from clean language mm -hmm. and that's what would you like to have happen mm. so that's a lovely question and people then start to say well what i'd like to have happen is i would like more space and then we're off you know, and what kind of space is that space yeah I'm thinking that we should share that lovely YouTube video that we've watched of Caitlin Walker. Yeah, so Caitlin Walker is someone that did train with David Grove in Australia. Um, she's taken that uh, approach into education and has made a space for herself in that world of talking about uh, clean language. And it's quite a powerful TED talk, isn't really it? Really powerful, yeah. Working with teenage children and around them their emotional response to education and things mm. like that. So it's really powerful to watch. I so, think we were both quite moved yeah, watching it. Yeah. We? So, so we'll yes. share that in the resources yeah. because that's a really great example of a metaphor. It's also a great example of clean language. Mm. Um, so I think that's a, a great... Um, we won't do it justice if we did a demonstration, no. but Caitlin no. Walker's expert. No, I tend... Well, we don't teach clean language as such. We introduce it as a an approach... We, we introduce the theory on our metaphor section of our course. Um, and I, I will openly say I, I'm not an expert in clean language. And I think it has its uses within mm. coaching. Um, but in some ways, it, it, it's best used in combination with other things. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Good. Thank you. And hopefully that's something for people to take away and they'll be falling over themselves looking for metaphor in their coaching. <laughs> and spotting time. metaphors left, right and centre. <laughs> well. We're struggling to end without using a metaphor. We so yeah. we will just say for now. <laughs> so next time on the podcast, we'll be talking about motivation. So I'm looking forward to that. I don't know when I can be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It'll just be me then. <laughs> I might see you next time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Until next time. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Oh, 
This has been a Monkey Pants Productions podcast. <laughs>